Oh, boys and girls, after the fifth time that my computer crashed, I decided to uh, switch over to the small laptop. So we'll see how this one goes. Sorry for all the delays. This is our first flip class video for Flip Friday. Woohoo! Uh, it's going to be about local winds. And which scale do you think that is? If you guessed mesoscale, then you would be correct. So these are our mesoscale wind events. Here they go. Uh, all these wind scale, mesoscale, local wind type things, they all run in a cyclical pattern. Uh, probably the best example is the sea breeze, as you can see here uh, on the video screen. Generally, uh, all of these happen due to uh, differential heating between one area to the next. You have one area that's heated more, and the other area gets heated less, and it causes this entire a rotational pattern to be happening. So as you can see on the screen here, uh, you've got your sea breeze, which at nighttime ends up being called a land breeze. Now remember, you name the winds after what? That's right, the way uh, that they're going. So where they're coming from, that's what we call it. So this one being the sea breeze, that happens during the daytime. What happens is the uh, earth, the land, the beach especially, that gets heated up way faster and then the water, because the water has this weird thing called specific heat. It makes it really hard to change the temperature of water. So the land heats up more than the water. And as you can see over here, that causes it, uh, like on the other time you heat things up, it gets less dense, it expands, and it rises. So it gets less dense, it expands, it rises. When it rises, it has no chance to start to spread out like that. So it rises, it spreads out. And then uh, the part of that goes over the ocean. It's cooled by the column of air that's above the ocean water that's cooler because of the heat exchange with the ocean. So it's cooler, it, uh, it's more dense, it sinks down, and then uh, it's created this gap right here where the air rose up. Since it's made that gap, it has no choice but to uh, fly right back into it. That's called the sea breeze. And you can actually stand on the beach during the day and you will constantly feel like the wind is just right in your face as you look out in the ocean. And that's actually the sea breeze. It's always blowing in during the day. Now at night, the sun sets, the earth gets heated faster than the water. It also gives up that heat faster than the water. So the earth then, the sandy beach, gets cooler than the water. The water retains what heat it had because of the high specific heat. And so then the whole thing goes, the water goes backwards now. So instead of uh, it blowing in, it'll blow out. So the earth will become cooler, and so the earth over here is cooler, and then it's going to blow right back out to the sea, and it does the same cycle, just in reverse. We also have lake effect winds, which is sort of like a mini sea breeze. Same exact idea, comes off the lake to the land during the day, and from the land back onto the lake at night, except this air is even moister, and it tends to be even cooler because the, uh, the salt water in the ocean changes its physical properties. Uh, regular water, uh, among other things, gives up uh, heat a lot more easily, so the air tends to be cooler coming off the lake breeze, which is what's responsible for all the snow that, like, Cleveland, uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, that lower whole part of Michigan, all those places, they just get pounded with snow. It's because of those lake effect winds. Water. Now, in addition to that, you have mountain and valley breezes. It's all about radiative heat loss. All these are about radiative heat loss. So the cool air coming off the mountain drains into the valley. When it's coming from the mountain to the valley, we call it a mountain breeze. And then at night, the sun sets, the mountain, uh, the valley tends to get cooler than the mountain. The mountain will retain it because of all the uh, usually the snow and stuff like that. And so it goes in reverse, back of the mountain, then we call it a valley breeze because it's coming from the valley. If nothing else, you're going to be so awesome at naming these ones. Now, due to uh, the uh, cooling effects and the moisture loss, this is why a lot of mountains have fog, especially early in the morning. If you go to the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, uh, they're just wrapped in this smoky, thick fog, and that's there because of the mountain and valley breezes. They also tend to be seasonally dependent. You get them more in the springtime. Now, 
Well, some of these have some really silly names like the chinook. And that's a Native American word, or it's also sometimes called the thin, that is a nice uh, Swiss and Dutchy type word. And uh, catabatic winds are generally what those are. We call them catabatic winds, is the actual official scientific term. Uh, Chinook and thin are local names given to, given to these catabatic winds from uh, people. We also have country winds, city winds, and the ever popular taboo. Now, uh, don't ask me any silly hashtags with a mood being used tonight that would not be appropriate. Let's talk about the uh, silliest words first, the Chinooks and the Finns. Uh, they're from the Rockies and the Alps. Chinook is actually a Native American word. It means snowed. And the Finn, uh, I have no idea what that word means, but it probably means something wrong at some point. This is warm, dry air. What it does is it slides down the lee side of the mountain. If you remember the Rats of Nim story, the lee is the side that is protected. So if you have a mountain right here, the wind's coming into it, the lee is the side that is not going to be affected uh, by the wind. And as a result, it is adiabatically heated. And that is a term that's used when anything gets compressed, it gets heated. And that's due to our relationship between temperature and pressure. Like you guys remember before, uh, as you increase the pressure, you increase the temperature. So if you're compressing something, you'll actually increase the temperature in there too, just like a, a bike pump. And so, as the air slumps down the other side of the mountain, it actually tends to cool. Here's the picture showing exactly that. Again, you're starting over here with the wind that goes up, and as it rises, it cools adiabatically, releases moisture, dumps snow all over this side of the mountain. And as it goes up, goes up, and goes over, it actually gets compressed, it gets heated, and you can see there's a difference in where the snow is. And uh, that's why they call it the snow eater, because it looks like it's eating the snow. You can watch it when these winds rush in uh, towards the end of the season, towards the end of the winter, they rush in and they just destroy the snow on the east side of the mountain. And at the bottom, they actually end up running hotter than they ever were before, which is one of the reasons why that other side of the Rocky Mountains is all desert. Uh, my brother was in the Navy, well, he still is in the Navy, but at one point he was deployed a little summer break doing some work with the helos, and they were flying some uh, practice drills back and forth over the mountains. And he said, when you fly uh, over the Rocky Mountains and you come into California, he said that it actually felt like someone was turning on the air conditioning. So... That's fun. Uh, catabatic winds. These are really fun ones. They're the highland winds. And they usually, uh, so you find them in like Scotland, places with highlands. And they're usually coming off the uh, ice sheets, glaciers. So uh, they tend to come in the fall. Uh, no, they, sorry, they tend to come in the winter, but they call them the fall winds. Which, so you can imagine all the seasonal change things that you could think of there. Uh, two popular ones are the Mistral and La Bora, and those are, they just tend to blow in and carry that cold and terribleness with it, and all kinds of nasty storms and nastiness. Uh, the final one we're going to talk about is the city slash country breeze. And if you've ever gotten down to Columbus in the summertime, you know that it's so much hotter uh, in the city than outside the city. Like, you drive into Columbus, it's about like 10 degrees warmer on any given day maybe even more. And that's due to all of, like the buildings and the blacktop, and it just really holds the heat in. So we're holding the heat in, and you know what that's going to do to the air? It's going to heat it. And so as a result, it works the same way as the sea breeze. Really, all of these, if you understand the sea breeze, just think about uh, everything else, and it's basically that same cycle. We have the snow eaters being the only one that's different, but the city breeze is the same idea. The heat uh, pushes the air upwards, creates this gap, it flows back out into the country, then rushes into the city. So you have air uh, moving into the city, and then at night, uh, it will do, it'll tend to do the opposite thing. The city will get cooler really fast. That black top, really low specific heat, really gives up the heat. Uh, some of them will trap the heat of the really huge city, like New York City traps it a little bit better, so you might have to wait like later into the night. But once the nighttime comes, then the winds reverse. They go in the opposite way. It starts blowing out of the city. And uh, so then we call it a city breeze instead of the 
country region, and we always name them from wherever they're coming. Now remember, this is a video. Uh, I know it went kind of fast, but you guys do have the option to stop, pause, record, go back, write down whatever you need to. Uh, hopefully you got a chance to watch this. Uh, it's going to be posted somewhere on the internet, potentially. For your uh, takeaway bonus homework, look up what the haboob is. It's going to be a bonus question on the quiz on Friday. I'm not going to mention this in class. Don't bring it up in class. Leave it as a secret for the people who watch the video and bother to look at what that wind is. It's a pretty fun one. So look up what that wind is, the haboob, and that will be extra credit on your quiz. If there's any questions, let me know tomorrow or the next day. You can tweet them at me. You can text them to me. You can even talk with each other. Maybe next time we'll set up some kind of forum posting or something where we can get a good discussion going, uh, provided my technology is a little nicer to do. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, rewind, rewatch, do whatever you need to do. See you guys tomorrow.